All right, so let's wrap up chapter six with this problem. It's uh, it's a fun one. All right, There's a lot of stuff going on here. Let's see if we can get through this. All right, an air conditioner. An air conditioner is kind of like a refrigerator. You know, it, it, we are inside the room is the refrigerated space. Uh, outside is where it's throwing heat uh, out. All right, so an air conditioner with refrigerant 134A is a working fluid is used to keep a room at 23 degrees C by rejecting waste heat to an outdoor at 34. Uh, the room gains heat through the walls and windows at a rate of 250 kJ per minute, uh, plus heat is generated by the computer TV lights at amounts to 900 watts. The refrigerant enters a compressor at 400 kPa saturated vapor at this rate and leaves at this pressure and this temperature. All right. The actual COP, maximum COP. Uh, okay. What did it tell us? What did it tell us? That right there would be the TL. This right here is the TH. The room, the room gains heat through the walls and windows at this, and also heat is generated by the electronics at that. So if we want to keep it cool, then we need to absorb that heat. Uh, that is the QL that we need to be getting out of the room, right? That is the QL that we need to be getting out of the room. Uh, those units uh, need a little bit of... Um, excuse me. Those units need a little bit of um, massaging, I guess. Uh, so the QL, I'm sorry about that, is going to be, let's see, 0.9 kilowatts and 250 kilojoules per minute. I know that a kilowatt is a kilojoule per second, so I need to divide that by 60 seconds. Both of those are kilowatts or kilojoules per second. All right, 5.067 kilowatts is the QL. The QL that we need to be uh, absorbing from the room to maintain it at a temperature. Okay. Part A is asking for the actual coefficient of performance. The coefficient of performance for a refrigerator is QL over WN or 1 over QH QL minus 1. All right, it is not 1 over TH TL. That is the answer to part B, right? That is if it was a Carnot. Uh, but it is not. So either one of these equations would give me the coefficient of performance. I do know the QL, uh, but I don't know the work or the QH. The work is in the compressor, right? The work is the work we put into the compressor to move, to, to compress the, the working fluid. Uh, and so this sentence right here, the refrigerant enters the compressor at this state. It leaves the compressor at this state. That's where we're going to get the work, right? That's where we're going to know, find out the work. And so the work, I've kind of mentioned this, the work is going to be M delta H, right? The work is going to be M delta H or the power is going to be m dot delta h. Uh, so this is going to be m dot h2 minus h1. Uh, it tells us that it, it enters saturated vapor 400 kPa. So, so for one, uh, it enters 400 kPa saturated vapor. Remember those property tables? You know, I'd go to A12. Uh, and we could find that H1, 255.61 kilojoules per kilogram. So that's what I'm going to plug in right there. While I'm on that property table, I'm going to get the V1. Uh, we'll see. Maybe we might need to use it. But while that page is open, 0.05127 meters cubed per kilogram. All right, so you see how you still have to know how to use the property tables, forwards and backwards, Know which tables to go to. And a lot of these, now we're going to be looking at refrigerant 134A. So tables A, 11, 12, 13. All right, state two 
as it is leaving the compressor, it leaves at 1200 kPa and a temperature of 70 degrees C. So I would go to uh, maybe A11 or A12, which would send me to table A13. It would, I would go to the saturated tables, but it would tell me, hey, this is not saturated. The temperature is too high or, or the pressure is too low. Uh, so telling me that it is superheated. So I go to the superheated table A13 and get H2 300.63 kilojoules per kilogram. So that's what I'm going to plug in for H2. All right, but I don't have M dot. I don't have M dot. What did it give me? That is liters per minute. That is V dot. That's a volumetric flow rate. I don't want volumetric. I want M dot, but I know that V dot volumetric flow rate is M dot times uh, the specific volume. The units would help me out here, uh, but here we go. So if I know the volumetric flow rate is 80 liters per minute, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save some room here because I think there's going to be a unit conversion that I, I need to do here. Uh, I want M dot, uh, and I know that V1, the specific volume, is 0 0.051 to 7 meters cubed per kilogram, uh, 0.05. All right, so let me think about units here. Uh, this is meters cubed per kilogram. This is kilograms per second, right? Volumetric flow rate might be in kilograms per second. So on the right-hand side, I have meters cubed, right? Total, both of those, I've got meters cubed per second. Um, I don't have meters cubed per second on the left-hand side, so let me change this to meters cubed per second. I need to change liters to meters cubed. I know that one, you know, a one meter by one meter by one meter box would be a thousand liters. And I need to change minutes to seconds divided by... 60. There we go. So I would get an M dot. Man, a lot of work. 0 0.02601 kilograms per second. And that's what I'm going to plug in right here. So now I can find the work or the, the power in is M dot H2 minus H1. It is 0 0.02601 kilograms per second. How did I get that? Well, I took the volumetric flow rate and the specific volume and found the M dot. All right, times H2 from property tables, 300.63 kilojoules per kilogram minus 255.61 kilojoules per kilogram. There we go, yes, kilojoules per second. WN of 1.17 kilowatts. Well, let me not box that in. It didn't ask for that. I needed that just to plug it in there to get the coefficient of performance. So the coefficient of performance for a refrigerator, this doesn't, it's an air conditioner, but it's really like a refrigerator, is QL over WN. This is 5.067 kilowatts over 1.17 kilowatts 4.33 is the coefficient of performance the actual coefficient of performance all right then it asks for what is the uh, maximum coefficient what's the best coefficient of performance well that would be the cop for a refrigerator if it was reversible 1 over TH over TL minus 1. You've got that equation. Write that on your formula sheet, but write that and remind yourself, hey, that's for a refrigerator and only if it's reversible, right? Only if it's Carnot or only if it's asking for the maximum, which it's asking for right here. This is 1 over, let's see, the TH was 34 plus 273. The TL, 23 plus 273. Uh, minus one, one over all that quantity. Uh, the maximum COP, wow, 26.91 coefficient of performance uh, if it was reversible. Okay, now we're getting there. Now we're getting there. All right, so now it asks, all right, forget this volumetric flow rate. What is the minimum volumetric flow rate of the refrigerant? at the compressor inlet 
for the same compressor conditions. All right, the same inlet and exit conditions means these same values, this H and that H are going to be the same, right? That's going to be the same. But it wants the minimum flow rate. So it's kind of, let's calculate a new M dot. Uh, the W equals M dot H2 minus H1. Let's calculate a new uh, M dot. But we're also going to have a new W. How can we find a new W uh, if it's the best, right? It didn't really say the best, but it said the minimum value. Uh, well, let's, let's use this COP for reversible. Um, well, the COP for any uh, refrigerator is QL over WN. So let's use the new COP, 26.91, uh, equals the same QL, still has to operate, still has to be uh, absorbing or taking this heat out of the room. What is the, the minimum WN? So the minimum WN is 0 .18, 0 0.1883 kilowatts. Let's use that right there. All right. So the best possible scenario is this COP, which gives us this minimum W. So 0 0.1883 kilowatts. Uh, let's find a new M dot with the same conditions at the inlet and, and e exit. Uh, the same 300.63 minus 255.61 kilojoules per kilogram. I would get a new mass flow rate 0 0.004182. Uh, that it would be in, let's see, kilojoules per second. This is kilograms per second. But I want the new volumetric flow rate, m dot times v. Same condition, so same v. So this is 0 0.004182 kilograms per second times a specific volume, 0 0.05127 meters cubed per kilogram. And if I want it in liters per minute, I would need to change meters cubed to liters. I would need to change... Uh, seconds to minutes, multiply it times 60, multiply it times 1,000. I would get a volumetric flow rate 12.9 liters per minute compared to the 80 liters per minute that it is requiring uh, in, in the actual device. Let's take a step back and look at that. Let's think about what we did. All right, I had some equations. You know, I had some equations, but I couldn't quite use them. But I thought, hey, this sentence right here about the compressor where the work is going in, I can do M delta H to get that work. So I did M delta H to get that work. The M was a little bit tough. I had to take the V dot times the specific volume to get the M dot. Uh, but once I got that, I found the work. Once I had the work, I can find the coefficient of performance. The maximum coefficient of performance uses the THs. So I use that to get the maximum COP. And then I use the new maximum COP to get the new minimum work. I use the new minimum work to get the new minimum M dot under the same conditions. All right. So the main kind of the main thing here, sometimes they don't just tell you the work that goes into the compressor. They tell you the inlet conditions and out outlet conditions, and you use M delta H to get the work in that compressor. If you can handle that one, then you can handle anything that I can throw your way, okay?